Hey guys, uh, I was just going to make a video on how to properly ground and uh, supply power to your car. This is a uh, Holly EFI related, but all these principles will uh, follow suit with any other EFI system. Um, but anyway, wire a bunch of cars and a lot of the stuff that I see that comes from, um, you know, guys that are hobbyists and racers and enthusiasts they uh you usually have some data problems and some noise issues so i figured uh a lot of y'all are in the middle of uh redoing cars for the winter and uh most of it is wiring related or efi related of some sort so i figured i'd uh, give everybody a a little you know tidbit of information here to try to help y'all out some of y'all have asked me about this so uh, here's what I got. So first off, I want to tell you that um, not every wire is equal. So this is welding cable. And as you can see, there is a ton of little strands. So use welding cable. Don't use this stuff from Best Buy or from Walmart or whatever. Uh, use good, high-quality welding cable. Uh, that's uh, the number one thing. I see a lot of people that always say, you need to run, um, you know, zero gauge or double zero or whatever it is. They probably have junk and it's very heavy and it's not very flexible. If you use good stuff, you don't need to use an um, enormous cable. And if you do it right, you don't need to use enormous cable. So uh, with that said, um, I'm going to show you my own car. And uh, this is how I wire every other car. I use four gauge for just about everything, but a lot of people tell you that that's not big enough really it comes down to how you do it. So, um, first thing, no, this is not a plug from Milwaukee. Uh, I just happen to use a lot of their stuff. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple tools. Um, everybody's probably seen these. These are just regular, you know, lugs. Uh, they come in, um, you know, a couple different flavors. And here's another one. Anyway, this thing right here, Hydraulic crimper. Uh, this was from Amazon. I think it was all of about 30 bucks. If you get on Google, you'll find it. Anyway, or on Amazon, you'll find it. This thing's great. Makes life a lot easier. If you've already got a pair of uh, vice blocks, they work great to hold the handle. So if you work by yourself, like I do, then um, the, you know, the vice actually comes in handy. So... That's, uh, that gives you a nice good crimp instead of how most people do it with these. Which these are fine if you, you know, have got a, a strong hand, but uh, some of y'all don't. So the wire comes out, ripping out of it. The next thing, you know, normal Klein wire strippers. Um, another thing that uh, some of y'all... Uh, some of the stuff that I see that, that comes through me, you guys use torches to uh, melt heat shrink. I'm not trying to plug Milwaukee, but use a heat gun. Um, don't torch it. <clears throat> and uh, a another cool little tool that uh, I use a lot is just a die grinder. Again, I'm kind of a Milwaukee guy, but any of them will work. And these little sandpaper rolls. So... Almost everybody, you know, winds up painting everything or powder coating everything. And, uh, you, when you go and please don't use self tapper screws, but when you do, you don't really have a uh, very good contact or a good clean ground. So, you know, knock the, knock the paint off of it with one of these. So this is something that has been around forever. And I think most of y'all don't know what it is, but, um, there's a little nut cert tool. So, see this thing? This is threaded. This is a 1024 size, but they come in a lot of different threads. So you drill a hole, and then you squeeze it, and now you have threads. So you can use a bolt, as opposed to a self-tapping screw, which is crap. So, again, they come in a whole bunch of different sizes, all the way up to half inch. Um, Amazon will probably be your answer for them, too. I buy them from McMaster Car. They're a little cheaper on there, but I buy uh, big quantities of them. 
And finally, before I show you stuff on a car, um, good heat shrink. So you do not have to buy super high dollar heat shrink. It's nice, but um, this is, you know, three quarter adhesive lined. So double wall adhesive lined is nice. Uh, and it creates a nice clean seal between the wire and the connector. <clears throat> but again, Buy some variety packs of heat shrink and make your job uh, a little nicer and uh, <clears throat> and also um, a little a little bit more robust for holding up to the elements. So um, on to the car. <clears throat> Grounding is the number one most important part of a car. So this is a little messy. Everything I'm going to show you here is uh, it's not done. I'm just in the middle of mocking stuff up and. Uh, just starting off wiring this car. <clears throat> so, um, I label everything, but you don't have to. Um, it just comes out a little nicer, but at the battery, you see chassis ground, you see engine ground, and then I got a lead for the charger. Um, I run a charge panel to let you know. You know, it's behind the gas door. It also tells you voltage. So, that's what those leads are for. So, it's a little bit cluttered on the battery, but... Um, it doesn't have to be. For Holly, don't go anywhere else. Go right to the battery. The reason they tell you to go to the battery is the battery works like a big noise filter. Not noise from your radio or not noise from the road, but um, actual uh, radio frequency interference and electromagnetic interference. So this is actually really important. <clears throat> if you look at one of your data logs and right click and hit mark data points, it'll either make or break you as a wiring guy. Uh, it'll tell you how uh, good or bad of a job that you have done. So, uh, with that said, you do, this is how I wire cars. So I, I don't really, you know, there's plenty of ways to do this, but I've wired plenty of them and never had a problem. So, I run a ground from the battery to the chassis in the back of the car. So I use a nut cert, it's down there on the frame rail. Um, I'm tired, so I'm not getting up underneath the car in the back since we gotta go up underneath the car in the front. But uh, one from the battery to the chassis, and another one, this one's called, uh, I labeled this one engine ground. That's gonna go up to the block, uh, to, up to the engine block. So it's, it's gonna go through a firewall bulkhead connector, and I'm gonna show you here in a second, but um, that's going to go straight to the block. So just because you have a motor plate in the car, just because you just don't rely upon that, um, run a wire. I buy a hundred foot of wire, four gauge at a time. Actually, I'm sorry, 250 foot at a time, but typically a car with a rear mounted battery uses right in the neighborhood of like 60 foot. So 55, 60 foot to do it right or, you know, to do it the way I do it. Then um, I got a hot lead that comes up here uh, that goes down to the kill switch. And from the kill switch, um, I'm going to have to get underneath the car here. <clears throat> it's a little dirty, so don't mind the mess. But from the kill switch, you can probably maybe see, we got one coming down. And there's that chassis ground. There's a nut cert in there. If you look close, it's kind of dark, but right around all that rubberized undercoating is, uh, actually it became rubberized undercoating. It's rubber from the tires. Um, it's all cleaned off with that little deburr. So the, we've got two hot leads coming off of here. All right. So one is labeled to the firewall and then the other one is to the smart wire, which is going to be the power distribution module in my own car. But you need to interrupt the hot lead in order to pass uh, NHRA. So this car I'm going to be doing drag week with. So we got to make uh, NHRA happen. Sorry, I'm not as limber as I used to be. Anyway, um, wire runs, you know, up inside of the car. I usually don't like to run wire up underneath the car. Uh, just, just don't do it. Here's uh, one power lead going to the smart wire. Um, so this will have its direct from the kill switch, its direct line 
uh, direct feed for power. Here's the plug for the ECU. Um, <clears throat> that goes back straight back to the battery. And then I use these little guys. Um, again, it's a mess under here, so, you know, give me a break. So I use those. Um, little firewall bulkheads. They're feed, I think they call them feed-through bushings. And they give you a, look at that. Nice little post up underneath the hood. So, um, if you look, we've got one wire on there, and it says engine ground. And that goes down to the block, okay? Now, if we look here, there is another one of those nut certs. So, that is a chassis ground for the block. So, we've grounded the battery in the back to the chassis. And then we ran a wire from the battery up to here. And then we ran from here, from that distribution block, or from that uh, feed through, we ran straight to the block. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I always do this, and then you can debate it all you want. I, I don't care. But the way I do this, I hope you can kind of see this. Ah, oh, there we go. So I grabbed the motor mount holes. Um, on Ford, the LS has got them too, but they're at two different locations. So one goes to one hole and one goes to the other. So then for power, we've got a lead for the starter and a lead for the alternator. So again, that's going to go straight back to the battery. So the reason being behind this. Um, it, I'm not going to get into all the uh, terminology of it, but uh, this works. So argue amongst yourselves, but this works, and it's never given me any problems. Um, the idea of grounding stuff all over the place on the frame rails, running a uh, self-tapper wherever you want, whatever's closest, that's bad. Don't do that. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, you might be able to see. Ah, uh, we can't see anything. Sorry. Anyway. It's a little tight in here. But there you can kind of see. This is an aluminum block, but uh, if it's a steel block, it would have been, you know, rubbed on with that uh, little Milwaukee die grinder. Um, <clears throat> but this one wasn't painted or anything. So it's bare. And then we got a wire right there from the alternator. So, when you do this, when you wire your car, just because you only have 20 foot of wire doesn't mean that that's what has been intended to be enough to wire your car and ground your car properly. Um, buy more than you need and keep the other stuff sitting off to the side. So, uh, I hope that <clears throat> that has kind of helped some of you all understand uh, power and ground distribution, how to do it clean, how to do it right. Uh, if not, just ask away, um, and I'll be happy to answer some questions. And to answer the question that I'm sure someone is going to ask uh, is, what label maker do you use? So if you ask me what label maker I use, that means that you didn't watch the whole video. And if you, don't, if you ask me what label maker I use, then I'm not going to answer you. So I use an Epson LW BX700. Um, I have another, I have a 900 as well, but uh, it's actually out for repair. Um, I dropped it. But yes, it uses a couple different color shrink tubes. Um, it actually uses a black shrink tube as well. That prints uh, white on black shrink tube, which is pretty nice. No, they're not cheap. Um, yes, they're nice. And uh, no, I don't have a connection for them. No, I'm not going to loan you mine. Uh, none of that stuff. So anyway, hope this helped. Uh, have a good one.